morning, everybody. What's up, Tiff? Welcome back. Good morning, all. Thanks so much. What a nice weekend. Yeah. Um, I had, I got to see some friends and everything. How about you? It's good to have a little time off for all of us. I'm doing good. You know, I got, uh, I'm starting to get back into the routine of family time with my kids, which, as you know, <laughs> is met with a little reluctance at times. <laughs> but we actually. Well, um, they're older. Yeah. But um, actually, we watched a movie that Ryan J highly recommended. So that was very worth it. And I'm happy that we did that. So that's good. Oh, that's good. Yeah, little family time. I'm going to suggest Game Night next. And the movie is um, Power Project. It's one that he has recommended. It's new, on, fairly new on, on Netflix. And um, not my kind of movie, but I was, I really enjoyed it. Ah, uh, I want to see that one. So yeah. okay, I'll have to get your scoop off camera. Yeah, I'll give, I'll give you the full details. So I wanted okay. to share something. This is a, a huge positive shout out for voracious readers. And I know a few of them in my life, both of my parents, my dad especially is a voracious reader. Um, and Carol Barrowman. Carol Barrowman, who's going to be here in a little bit. So this is definitely yep. for her. This is why I'm doing it today. And okay. um, I understand she's listening, which is great. Um, and my oldest daughter, too, remarkably, because of my other kids, not so much, um, is, loves to read. So I think she's going to like this. I think you'll like this, too, Tiff, because I know that you and I like to read some of the same things, which is cool. So one of the things that voracious readers have is empathy. Probably not surprising, mm. right? Because when you read a book, you can walk in someone else's shoes. Yeah, I would guess it's only for fiction, but... <laughs> yeah, well, the, the book that they give as an example is 12 Years a Slave by Solomon Northrup. Yeah. And um, I thought that was a great selection for that. But it's understanding our own frailties makes us more likely to be kind to others. So mm. maybe voracious readers are more kind the ability to be alone because a lot of people in today's high tech we're, we're all about being plugged in you know but yeah. readers um it's a way of training ourselves to value solitude instead of fearing it and i know you you're like people that i know you really value your alone time i don't mm -hmm. get enough of it i feel like with kids around not, especially now all the time but that i think that that's a a, a good positive thing that readers do have well, I think it's a skill in general just to be comfortable and okay being alone. And I've always made the distinction, right? There's a difference between being alone and being lonely. Yes. You have to be able to be alone without being lonely, mm -hmm. you know? So, you know, there, that's a good distinction to know for yourself. But there is, anytime you have a question in your life, you want to know something about what you're supposed to do or, or thoughts that you have or try and connect with your higher power, I think that moment of silence and stillness is where you find those answers. And that I think that's the only place we find them. Absolutely. And the book example they give, Not Surprising, is Walden by Henry David Thoreau. The last thing is mm -hmm. writer. Good readers make good writers. And, you know, we all think about writing as like a school assignment or people who do writing as a profession. But we're all writers, whether it's texting, yeah. emails, um, handwritten letters, which, you know, um, on writing by Stephen King is the example there. But I think it's, I see so many bad emails and I think maybe we should all do a little more reading because it's sort of the cornerstone of becoming a better writer is reading more. It's true. I know Carol's going to hit on a lot of those uh, great topics. You know, something that you have to be good at writing to do is also to be able to be a good speaker. Yes. A lot of people think, oh, you just need the charisma, right? Mm -hmm. But no, you've got to be able to, of course, get your point across, but be able to write some poignant things. So um, I wanted to transition in telling you a little bit about um, this public speaking, because I think a lot of people aren't doing it a lot these days, but we know it is like the biggest fear of most people is speaking in public. Well, you know some that, people, right? Yeah, there's surveys where some people would rather face their own death than speak in public. Yes, totally. So this is fascinating. They say in the future, the way that a lot of people may learn, because a lot of people take uh, courses, right? They get a coach to help them be yep. able to do public speaking a little bit better. Well, one of the things they said is now Amazon's Alexa is actually turning into a public speaking coach. And they've been testing this program because one of the biggest things people feel with a coach is they're also still being judged by a human, right? So they're saying right now they've done this whole public speaking tutoring program that they're they're testing. And they're saying the technique that they use alleviates anxi uh, the anxiety for pre-speech jitters. That's what they found out. Because what it does is it identifies and then it changes. It, it, so it recognizes those negative thought patterns that you have, whether about yourself or your performance, and it helps you be able to change them, which, 
I mean, we know with like cognitive behavioral therapy or any of those kinds of things, NLP, you know, any of those things that help you change your thoughts can help you change your outward performance. Well, and you don't have to be a motivational speaker to pu right. publicly speak, even as for a living. Yeah. And that's why I think speech is so huge in school. But you think about how many people, teachers are speaking in public, pastors. Absolutely. I mean, so many jobs. If you're the CEO of a company, you're speaking in front of people. So yeah, I think kids it's, have to give presentations on their homework. Yep. It's such a great skill to have. And I think if that is a positive thing that comes from technology like Alexa, and aren't there other names, like depending on the, the technology, like it's not always uh, Alexa. Yeah, but it doesn't mean they have the same programs oh, or technology right. within yeah. them. This is only for Alexa. Okay. You can tell I don't know what I'm talking about. But like Siri, for example. But I think that's great. I mean, when Whenever I hear about really positive things that are, are connected to technology, I'm all for it. And, and I think that's great because yeah. I think the more we all can get over our public fears about speaking and things like that, it's, it's awesome. So I love it. I think it. it'll be interesting. Yeah. yeah, I like it.